Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I've been replaying Eternia recently and I forgot how lovely this game is. The game is very pretty, it's full of content, and every second you can see how much love was poured in this game. However, despite the fact that this game was released in the West, Eternia is still quite badly documented. It's still a mess if you aim for 100 percent fire, there's some mistakes in guides, and most importantly, many mechanics are completely unexplained. And the ones I want to talk about today are mainly focused on your two casters. I'll be going extremely in-depth on the vitality system and how it impacts your casting time. So get ready, because I have a lot of things to share. Before anything, let's do a quick recap on what are those Kramers. Kramers are basically the elemental spirits in the world of Eternia. As you progress through the story, you will acquire greater Kramers that rule over those elements and will allow you to cast new spells and summon them. When you acquire a Kramer, you must put them in either Kills or Meredith's Kramer cage, and which character you choose determines who is the owner of the Kramer until you change it. There are 10 greater Kramers in the game, 5 from Inferia and 5 from Celestia. It's important to note that every Kramer has an opposite element. For instance, Vault is the opposite Kramer of Undyn. It's something that will be quite important for this guide, so be sure to remember that. Once you get Undyn, your very first greater Kramer, the game will teach you about vitality but doesn't give you much details on how to use it to your advantage. Basically, Every greater Kramer has a vitality stat that grows from 0 to 10, and it fluctuates in battle depending on the elemental spells you use. You can see your current vitality for a greater Kramer when checking on the Kramer cages, and if you're in battle, you can simply highlight the greater Kramer summon. Vitality goes from level 0 to 10. Two levels are separated by four invisible sub-levels that the game uses to track your progression. When you release an elemental spell, the greater Kramer of this same element gets a plus 0.5 bonus in vitality. That means a bonus of two sub-levels, and that also means that you just need to cast two spells of an element to get one level up. When you release an elemental spell, the opposite greater Kramer gets a minus 0.25 penalty, which means you lose one sub-level and you need four spells from the opposite element to lose a full level. Whether the spell released is a weak or a strong one doesn't change anything. In this example, both Aqua Age and Spread will give you a plus 0.5 bonus. Whether the spell released is from the owner of the greater Kramer or not, doesn't change anything. In this example, both Kirt's Fireball and Meredith's Eruption will give you a plus 0.5 bonus for Ifrit's Vitality. If a spell has multiple elements, only the primary one is taken into consideration. Enemy spells don't affect your Vitality either. And finally, only the owner of the Greater Kramer can make them reach level 10. In this example, Meredith can cast Grave as many times as she wants, but Kills Earth Kramer will never reach level 10 until he uses an Earth spell himself. Okay, you now know the basic rules for how vitality increases and decreases in battle. But now that we have a Kramer at level 10, there are a set of new rules you need to know. When you reach level 10, the game displays a vitality maximum notification in battle, and you can see a reminder of that on the HUD below the character that just reached that level. At level 10, most people will want to release a greater Kramer. Doing so will bring back its vitality to level 3. However, you can do other actions such as casting another spell of this element. If you do that, the vitality of the greater Kramer will be back to level 5. You can't have two greater Kramers at max vitality at the same time. If another greater Kramer reaches level 10, the vitality of the other greater Kramer will be back to level 9. One interesting thing to know 
is that the game checks your vitality only at the moment you start casting a spell. For instance, if you start summoning but another spell forces you to go back to level 9 or 5 in the meantime, you will still be able to release a greater Kramer. This is something that we will use later on. There's one single thing left to know about vitality, but before that, I actually want to switch to the casting system and you will understand why. One thing that most people don't know is that vitality actually has a huge impact on casting time. The higher your vitality is, the faster you will cast a spell of this element. And the best way to explain this is to do some frame by frame analysis. For this study, I chose Meteor Storm since it has a very long casting animation to begin with. That way, we will be able to see how much your caster will benefit from high vitality. Okay, let's now display our results on a graph. As you can see, the casting time dramatically decreases with higher vitality. The formula is a bit strange, because it's not linear, there are some flaws at level 2, 5 and 7, and yet the reduction bonus is pretty much the same between the other levels, so I don't know how this was designed and coded, but I don't really understand why it's like this. My main theory would be that those flaws were made to take into account the fact that your vitality can reset to level 3 or 5 very easily and help your mage go back to casting spells faster than if it was a linear formula. Once again, if a spell has multiple elements, only the primary one is taken into consideration. Casting time is also calculated when you input the spell, meaning that any change in the vitality during the casting animation won't affect how fast the spell is released. Also, Vitality will affect both your mage's casting time. For instance, if Kill's Gnome is increasing in vitality, both Kill's Stalagmite and Meredith's Grave will be released faster. With all these pieces of information, you probably understand the necessity to increase your vitality to make your casters even more deadly. And with all the rules we have seen so far, you will have way more control on how to keep vitality high. But this is still not over. There are other stuff that you should know about casting speed. One of them is Kill's D-pad feature. If you press the right directions shown at the D-pad, you can lower your casting time. Each successful input lowers casting time by 2 frames. However, each fail will increase your casting time by 4 frames, so don't mash that D-pad like crazy, because the game won't like it. There's also one piece of equipment that I need to mention, and it is the Mystic Symbol. In this game, it simply says that it decreases casting time. How effective is it, and how does it work with Vitality? Well, the results will probably surprise you. Let's do once again a frame-by-frame -frame analysis with the accessory equipment. <laughs> Well, well, it seems that equipping a mystic symbol will actually fix your casting time no matter your vitality level. Let's start the previous chart on top of this one. We can see that the casting time with your mystic symbol is basically the same as if I had a level 9 vitality, and here it's almost always better to have it equipped. I say almost because... You see it, right? It's there taunting us. That ultimate level 10 casting time. I'm just not content with equipping a mystic symbol. I want to see how I can use that slight bonus to improve even more my mages. 
and you all probably wonder how is it possible when anything you do at level 10 will reset your vitality. Well, there's one specific rule I haven't mentioned about vitality, and we are going to use it now. Let's summarize what we already know. Releasing a spell will bring back vitality to level 5 and summoning to level 3. That's not good. Reaching max vitality with another Greater Kramer will lower vitality of the first one to level 9. Since the spell only increases vitality by 0.5, you would still need to cast more to reach level 10 again. Using this mechanic will barely improve casting time. But there's something we haven't tried yet. Let me explain it with an example. We have killed Sif at level 10 and Meredith's gnome at level 9.5. Meredith is going to cast Grave and gnome will reach level 10 itself. Normally, Kill Sylph should go back to level 9. However, and this is where the exploit lies, since gnome is Sylph's opposite Kramer, the game will actually prioritize a penalty from using an opposite Kramer spell. In this case, it means that Kill Sylph will go back to level 9.75 instead of 9, and any win spell will bring his vitality back to level 10. Pretty cool, right? But it's not over. Remember what I said earlier. The game calculates casting speed at the moment you input your spell. Thus, you can alternate between your two mages to always cast with a level 10 bonus. Let me show you with an example. In the initial state, Kill Sylph is level 10, and Meredith's Gnome is level 9.5. Meredith starts casting Stalagmite. She has a level 9 casting bonus. Just after, Kill starts casting Earth Thrust. He has a level 10 casting bonus. Meredith finally releases Stalagmite. This means that Gnome reaches level 10, and Sylph is back to level 9.75. Before Kill releases any spell, Meredith will start casting Stalagmite again. She will then benefit from a level 10 casting bonus. And after that, Kill finally releases Earth Thrust. Gnome is back to level 9.75 and Seal reaches level 10. And now you just have to keep looping from step 2 to 5 and you will always be casting spells with the maximum casting time reduction. Not that, due to the way the spell queue works in this game, this strategy can be used for either low, medium or high level spells. All of this may sound complicated at first, but once you've tried it, you'll see that it's not that hard to set up. And that's why I really encourage you to try it. This technique obviously has some benefits, but also some drawbacks. For the benefits, it makes you cast at a higher speed than normally. It's available early in the game. The first time you can actually start using it is after defeating Gnome. And it's way before you get your first Mystic Symbol. And way, way, way before you get two of them. And obviously it will also save an accessory slot on both your casters. Because you won't be using a Mystic Symbol to use this technique. As for the drawbacks. Well, you likely won't be able to use a weakness and resistance system to your advantage. Because since you're using opposite elements, there are only few enemies that won't resist one of them. Or uh, you will have to deal neutral damage to them. The technique is also very hard to maintain if you are playing alone. Because not only you will have to sacrifice your shortcuts to be sure your casters keep the rhythm, but even with that you really need to protect them well because any interruption can easily break the loop. So, to conclude, I would say it's a technique that has very interesting benefits, but is also very situational. I believe it's a technique that is way more useful if you're playing multiplayer, because you can easily adapt with your partners in case something goes wrong, and restart the loop again. To finish this guide, I'll display a summary of those mechanics, I will also put them in the description so that you can easily have access to them without watching the entire video again.
I hope you enjoyed this guide. Don't hesitate to give me feedback on it. Like, subscribe, whatever. If you boot Tiania again and try this, I would be very interested to know if you were able to use those mechanics to your advantage. And that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching and see you all later. Oh,